Yeah, you know what it is, it's your boy Kaden for you, and you're now rocking with Hip Hop Arms. Alright, so we back with Kanan for you, dog. What's poppin'? How you doing, dog? Everything cool. Hey, how you man. been, bud? A lot of work. Yeah. Just grinding, going out, pushing. It feel good to be putting in the work like that, though? Like, you feel like you're getting somewhere with what you're doing, bro? You know, sure. you know, a lot of people out there, like, they feel like they be doing some work, but they don't really mm -hmm. be doing it. But it feel good to be yeah. moving on. Feels like a lot of, like, just today. Right. A lot of accomplishments. Mm -hmm. A lot of things we got done. Right. So every day it's just us. Yeah, because even me trying you. to get with, with you was a little busy trying to even get you here tonight, dog. Yeah. Appreciate you coming through, though, for real. No problem, bro. All right, so let's let's dive into this, dog. What, what made you want to get started with music? Because honestly, but I feel like a lot of people who look at you may say, dog, from just not maybe really knowing them and say you were singing dog but mm -hmm. i've listened to some stuff you'll be really doing you'll be doing more than just singing bro you'll be really spitting sometimes dog so what do you what would you say you are bro a singer rapper all, all the one not to sound like cliche or something but right. i'm an artist you're an artist that's what the all right, I, 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 you know? I got you like, all right. it's like i don't just it's rappers who just like rap right singers who just sing right i feel like Humbly I say this, I create, you know? Right. Like, I don't just put words together. Right. I think about how this could fit here, how the fan could feel about this. Right. You know, so it's just like a crowd instead of just rapping or singing. Okay, all right. That, that's, that's, that's solid. So, Canaan for you, uh, where, where, did the, where did the name come from? Um, It all started with my first song. When I was just Kanan, first I was Young Savage. And then, young you know, Savage. Yeah, I was like young. Young Savage, so, I never so, saw. My mom, she's like, you know, she's a mother. She's like, right. with the type of image you trying to put out. Okay. Cause, yeah. So, okay. I changed it to Kanan. Mm -hmm. Then, and my song all days is like Kanan for ya. Oh yeah. yeah. Right. And everybody is like, model Kanan for ya, daddy. Mm. So I was like. So you think this is yeah. this, what you, this is what it can be for the long term, Kanan for you? Yeah. I ain't, I ain't about it. I'll say that's a good name. So what what really got you into the whole music thing? Didn't you come up doing like uh you would sing for people and stuff yeah. like that, right? Well, it all started well back in Fort Lauderdale. That was that's where I was born. Okay. Um, I would always have like pots and pans, beating on pans and stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, singing. You know, I was young, so I couldn't really sing. Okay. But like people I used to look up to, like Chris Brown and stuff. Mm -hmm. Chris Brown, Bryson Tiller, Michael Jackson. Mm -hmm. So they was the like the inspiration for me to like why I wanted to get into music mm -hmm. and like. The reaction from people like when they first when they were starting to do like the um the little remixes and stuff mm -hmm. and when they made my first song all days the reaction people got from it and it's like oh it's so relatable mm -hmm. so it's like so I just keep going so with it. right so without being said with you making that point because I've I've been told before by uh by another artist they said that the reason that they do it because I was asking bro like what's really the point but they said at this point bro there's nothing that feels better than someone singing your song like someone mm -hmm. sending it is that yeah. how you feel that way too yeah it's, it's a good feeling where like someone comes up to you and it's like just like today we was at um St. Augustine's we was there for a meeting and mm -hmm. I walk into school and people was like play I love your song where your song at mm. and it was me and my DJ shout out DJ Teo okay. he was just we was at suck he was selling his yeah your first t-shirts that was mm -hmm. totally good cool, and he dope but yeah he was getting the t-shirts and these is like five, six boys. He just he walk up to us, and mm -hmm. one of them like he was trying to start a beef or something. Yeah. Then so he's like, mm -hmm. let's put this boy, you know. The next boy walk up, and he's like, play no boy, that's Kanan for your boy. Yeah. He hard, baby. Right, yeah, he's right. so hard. Right. So it's just a good feeling. That's right. Like, that's like what what keeps you like going and keep pushing. Right, right. So yeah, that's a good, that's that's a beautiful feeling. Right. So. As of right now, you would not not say long term. Just right now, what's like the next step you want to be able to reach? Like, let's not say perform at like the biggest show of the year. Let's just uh -huh. say like what's the something that you have in mind right now that that's the next milestone for you. I feel like you can't go global mm -hmm. if you haven't conquered where you at first. Okay. So what I want to do is expand the ghetto them all in mm -hmm. the Bahamas. Okay. Before, uh, because everyone always have that mindset like. Right. Or they won't be in the future. Right. But no one is like, look at the stairs you have to take to get right. up. So, this, the next step I would say is letting the Bahamas know who I am. Right, right. Because that's an interesting point because you've got a lot of people 
that uh, look up and say, I want to be like Gunn or I want to be someone who is whatever. But you got people yeah. who are like really inside their city that, that control that and really, you know what I'm saying? That's mm-hmm. really not, I, I think that's a really good thing to try to do. Like try to, you know, do what you're doing where you at, yeah. and then it'll be way easier to, to turn to and, and, and try to make it bigger. That's, that's, that's a good point though. So uh, who, who would you say right now that you look up to as a Bahamian artist so you, who, who you like to listen to? Um, I'd say Twin Nam. Twin Nam? And also Julian, because Julian Belier. Mm-hmm. When I first started, just I like, could make songs, mediocre songs, just mm-hmm. me making music. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't say he put me where I'm at right now, mm-hmm. but he like shaped me. Like, cause I ain't gonna lie, I wasn't professional. Mm-hmm. I was just like, you know, mm-hmm. a young dude rapping. Mm-hmm. But he like shaped me, made me professional, showed me this and not what to look out for, mm-hmm. what not to look out for. So those it's are, been help, helpful uh, so far. But it's it's a lot of Bahamian artists who I really listen to. Mm-hmm. Like a lot of guys, but Twin Nam, Julian Believe, mm-hmm. those are the people like who is like Mm. That's what you gotta do. That's what you gotta do. Right. Okay. That's and that's that's cool mm. that you got them reaching out to you. All right. So let's talk about something that I that I really was wanted to get into with you because, and I'm gonna tell you why I said it the way I said it. So when we really first was starting up this hip hop bombers thing, uh-huh. we we wanted to do something that would really catch the attention of a lot of people. So we put out a top ten list. You feel me? Just Bayman, Robinson, what's not. And you made our honorable mention list, right? Uh-huh. And I'm gonna let you know because there's a lot of people. I kid you on, you get actual. Well, there's a lot of people. <laughs> there's, a, there's a lot of people that message telling us all this was garbage it was yeah. trash it was you know what I'm saying mm-hmm. it was opinionated bias or whatever but I kid you not like the the way it was set out was to say like there's no way we can say that Canaan ain't up there bro it, it ain't a question it's just that because it was the first list that we had out mm-hmm. it would have looked even biased not to put those guys up there you see what I'm saying so with getting that out obviously the next one we do whatever there's gonna be way more new people just because that was the first list we ever had uh-huh. you had to put like the founders of the, the, the list there wouldn't there would be no list without them you see what I'm saying uh-huh. so how, how do you feel about where you were positioned on the list bro um I wouldn't say well of course I felt like it should have been like a higher position because right. if we if we want to talk about the less like we talking about who's working the hardest mm-hmm. who was like who's making an impact mm-hmm. i wouldn't say like julian line like like those cyber rappers i wouldn't say they don't make an impact mm-hmm. but it's like do it starting out right. at the bottom mm-hmm. who really right. chopping things right. trying to get the top working working right. working so when you have like a like a less mm-hmm. it's like it ain't just based on popularity. That's what I feel like most people do. Mm-hmm. They base it on the popularity. But I would base it on who's working the hardest. Who's working hardest. Every, everyone's working, but as niggas, you, as niggas who got, who stay sleeping mm-hmm. while these guys down here, they up working, they up work, recording, right. dropping right. songs. Mm-hmm. And as people, the crowd, mm-hmm. feeling these niggas are on here, mm-hmm. why are they feeling up here? Because set up here, they relax. Okay. Like, they just, I feel like that's where I need to be. I can mm-hmm. just chill from here. Yeah. Time wise, it's a lot of more oh, steps yeah. you gotta take. Okay, so with that being said, how do you look at those particular artists? And because for me, not to say, well, at least when I was in school, they were the niggas who I was like listening to as a being. And then mm-hmm. even now, it really, I don't want to say it hasn't because it hasn't, but just like for the, for the, majority of it it hasn't really gone much higher than than those what do you think sets you apart from them that you could actually burst that gap because you know we got people like bass and town or whatever who, mm-hmm. whatever but it, it, it ain't too much what do you think that sets you apart that's, that's going to be able to break just because we won't say that they conquered the bombers but they did a pretty good job and julian believe yeah. and 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 uh judah who's been performing for like 10 years what uh-huh. do you think is going to be able to break that threshold of getting past that point uh what i always do mm-hmm. i don't look at one generation mm-hmm. and say this is what I'm going to do my music based off or one genre and say this is what I'm going to base my music off mm-hmm. I have an album coming out in February and each song is a different genre to expand mm-hmm. so let's say I get booked for this show mm-hmm. and it's uh, like a soca type right. track you got something for I got that. a soca song okay. hip hop type song I got a hip hop song so you appeal to the masses you know what I'm saying? Okay. and also I could go to an adult party mm-hmm. To the, to the elderly party mm-hmm. and perform a song that I have mm-hmm. because 
a right. type of music and then still go to my generation okay. and have them have their head bopping like not to say like it's like for Julian Belief let's say let's say for him okay. he could go to where he's at his his um generation mm-hmm. and have the place place crazy mm-hmm. but to my generation right it's not that right it's good music mm-hmm. but it we, ain't we, something we, respect, got, we appreciate it yeah you know what I'm saying? but it right. ain't something they could right say too so i feel like what i do different is i try to reach everyone okay a variety of people mm-hmm. so that feel like but that must like, be tough to do though because uh-huh. instead of like in the let's say because i won't say that i but i put out a, like i've had features with certain people that i've done music before and even me just trying to like focus on not even like a, a genre just trying to focus on a rhythm and and something to talk about is mm-hmm. difficult so for you to be ch- putting out and die you said an album coming out with a, a couple of different genres that must have taken a whole bunch of time for you how, how do you even do that um it, it isn't really a lot of time mm-hmm. I mean recording wise you want to mm-hmm. make sure everything's perfect but when right. it comes to the writing aspect mm-hmm. is, it isn't too much time but it's more like how I feel right because I feel like certain artists they overthink too much things mm-hmm. and that's where they go wrong that's why it's hard for them to write a song because alright I gotta think about this mm-hmm. and I gotta think about that mm-hmm. but I could go on the ri- like rhythm is, is always easy for me right like, so I could just first I'll hum it out mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. then I'll flat start writing mm-hmm. And what I do, things that pop in, like nowadays, let's say TikTok. Mm-hmm. I have a song that says, um, 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 man, like me don't waste time. Mm-hmm. But if I don't have it, I'm gonna make time. Bad guy, I love to do TikTok. Mm-hmm. It's never too old for the FaceTime. Mm-hmm. That's that's things was popping. Right. So people can hear that nigga be like, right. Oh. And you, it's crazy you say that because you you had like a rap scheme just now with like different ops you had it before, but a lot of people wouldn't catch it. So like you feel almost like you don't you you like if i were to put up music and i would like i had like boss like that and with it uh-huh. i know they bop into it but it's really going over their heads or whatever uh-huh. you still feel the same type of appreciation when people still listen to your music because uh-huh. i was listening to artists this morning uh-huh. i was listening to artists this morning and i was like bro there's a lot of like good bars and schemes in there that i'm sure these all people ain't paying attention to but the the bop good the music good but like you still feel the same type of appreciation of people even though most of them don't be catching it is is people most of the people they do catch it because mm-hmm. okay. if you just sit down and listen to the song and just mm-hmm. say all right this song hard mm-hmm. that's fine you it could go straight over your head okay. but if you're trying to like sit down and listen to the word for word mm-hmm. like let's say tj tail he has to play my music mm-hmm. tj snipes he has to play my music so when they hear it they're like whoa we in the studio and they're like oh mm-hmm. Like, cause they catching it, cause they right. actually listening to it. Okay. So, like, let's say for instance, Drake. Mm-hmm. I'd sit down all the tight time and listen to what he say, mm-hmm. because it's always something where I have to go on genius and search it up and like, what he oh, talking about. Right. So that's where I like some of the songs I just go straight forward, so you can hear what they saying. But mm-hmm. then like deep songs. Right. Then that's when I can like put like metaphors and stuff inside mm-hmm. it. Right. So. So you mentioned Drake. Is Drake one of your people that you listen to right now? Yeah. Who Who else you kind of listening to right now? Drake, Lil Baby, mm-hmm. Bryce and Solo, PMB Rock. Mm-hmm. Are you it. Are you a type of person that? Well, I can't even ask the question. You enjoy not just all genres because you have an album coming out, but like all types of rap rapping right now, bro. With how they have so many different stuff coming out. I wouldn't say. I listen to all because okay. it's just some like. What about that crazy trend they got on Twitter of like name someone, everyone messing with, but you just don't really care to hear what they talking about? I'd see Lil Pump. Lil Pump. Okay, well, that's decent answer. Mm-hmm. I don't think I, I ain't no be minded that. Mm-hmm. Okay, so you say you you grew up in uh, no you were you born you were born in Florida. Uh, yeah. Did you were you, you spend any time over there? Um, I moved to the Bahamas when I was nine years old. No, nah, oh, so you had a, a good time over there. Uh-huh. How was it over there? Um, well, it was more of I was a pro- problematic child, so yeah, it was just more like problems. But I also spent a lot of time in church over there, like playing the drums and stuff. Mm-hmm. But I wouldn't see. I would learn more over there if I go over there now mm-hmm. than when I was younger because it was just me running up and down mm-hmm. and I ain't gonna lie, it ain't too much that I remember okay. to be like, yeah, right. this, this and that, this mm-hmm. and that. But so what about even coming over here? How was it? How was it over here for you? When it you was a, it was like a serious switch, like because like, even when they started going to school, like I had an accent, so 
What school did you go to? Um, Bahamas Academy when they first moved out. Oh, you went to Bahamas Academy? Uh-huh. I went to Bahamas Academy. So, like, I was in class and they was asking my name and uh-huh. I started talking and people were like, what do you say? Uh-huh. Like, right. But at the same time, mm-hmm. like, it's girls like, oh, you can talk right. to me, you talk to me. Mm-hmm. So it was like, it was like a switch. Mm-hmm. But then, like, as time went by, you know, you always want to adjust to the culture. Mm-hmm. So people started looking at me because they say I'm white and they sound weird saying I'm white. Yeah. But then as time went by, then they started to adjust to the culture mm-hmm. and different things. So mm-hmm. it didn't take long for me to adjust because mm-hmm. the vibe and stuff in the Bahamas, mm-hmm. I'd rather be here mm-hmm. when it comes to the vibes and stuff than to be in the States. Okay, that's decent. So coming up, uh, let's say like grade 10, 11, were you like a person who would be out on the weekends? We see all those parties that they used to be having. Were you with that kind of person coming up? Yeah. Yeah? Well, what was like some of the... One of the best experiences you probably had in, in your school days uh being out. You're talking about parties, right? You get parties downtown, wherever you at, just out and Um There's so much. Mm. It is it is it's, it's throw it at anyone, does it don't have to be the biggest. Mm. Great ten eleven? And any time that you was really into partying like that's when everyone was just Uh out. I would say you be lit. You be lit? The first time I went, it was like so much people and like yeah, that is big it party. ain't like a regular party where you to the party for two hours and mm-hmm. niggas start punching it up. Right. Like it's a party where everybody minding their wife, mm-hmm. everybody having fun, everyone got their drinks. Mm-hmm. So it wasn't like none of the my age group mm-hmm. parties I was to. Right. So it's like, all right, mm-hmm. maybe take this five. These are actually the mature set. Right. So that was a crazy party. Uh, What's you, what's you think something that people wouldn't be able to tell just from like talking to you from a moment, no more like two two minutes? What do you think? What's something you got that you know you could sing, you know you could rob? What's something that you got that you just ain't really no one, not too much people know about it? Mm, I just get off a lot. Just get off a lot. Mm. Okay. And I always like I wouldn't come around people like. Mm. That's it. Like we in the car, they didn't make me Superman, mm. but you don't know that. Right. So I'm not gonna show you mm. what Dylan costs. Right. So y'all didn't do me nothing. Mm. So I need to come to you with a smile, with a good right. attitude, because mm. y'all had nothing to do with that. So mm. if some, if like something makes me mad, I never bring that attitude mm. to other people. Right. So I would say, chill person always getting off. Mm. Chill person always getting off. That's cool. And then you all you also have the aspect of like writing off emotion too. You mm-hmm. you could also just put put it in a song and then so I, I get the point. So you you as of a as a small independent rapper, independent uh-huh. independent artist, my fault, independent artist. You wanna keep it that way? Like let me theoretically speaking, if an artist would have come out to you today and say like we wanna do some work or whatever, but they wanna own a percentage of your music, you know what I'm saying? How would you go about that scenario? Um, well, first of all, it's like, I have a team. Okay. It's like, and it's not only me. I wouldn't take, I'd take, like, um, credit for the music part. Right. But it's like, I see DJ, DJ Teo, DJ Leaky, mm-hmm. promote him in music. Well, right, Warren, Ta-da. Warren, that, 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 that's all really included with, if they, if you were to get recognized and the people who, who create your stuff is going to be there too, but... The, the face of it where it's really going to come down to would be Kane or whatever uh-huh. doing, and, they, and they're really going to say bro what do you want to do what makes you happy with it you see what I'm saying how, how would you go about that well for now I don't know what the future works okay. but I would see I would want to remain an independent, independent artist okay. because once you get into like let's say under a label or mm-hmm. signing with people everything like all the decisions mm-hmm the vibes you have, mm-hmm. it don't belong to you no more because now you have to do half of what they think it. Mm-hmm. So I would rather be able to sit down mm-hmm. and think and be like, all right, this is what I want to do without right. no question, okay. without having to ask nobody, mm-hmm. but just do mm-hmm. what I got to do. Who Who's a behemoth that you would want to do a feature with, like uh, that you haven't done a feature? I'm, I'm sure you got some stuff that you just haven't released yet or whatever. Uh-huh. Um... Well, the feature I really wanted with him was Twin Them. I got mm-hmm. that already. Okay. Well, with DJ Overdose. Okay. You'd want to do a feature with DJ Overdose. As as though he, I, I'm about. You ever talking about it? See. Uh, we've been, we've been, we've been talking. Mm-hmm. 
I actually have a song what he's supposed to be hopping on. Mm. We'll see where it goes. How do you feel about that though? Like you feel you feel uh, how can I put it? Because don't I don't nothing I say is like disrespectful. Uh-huh. Right? How do you feel about because a lot of people are gonna are gonna look at it and say overdose is on this track because he want you see what I'm saying? How do you feel about like, someone who let's say didn't go to school or didn't know him, whatever? Who would not get that same opportunity, but who was almost just as talented, did not be able to do a song with Overdose and get that popularity? How you, how you, how you look at that? You think it's not, let me not say fair because you gotta do what you gotta do at the end mm-hmm. of the day. But how do you look at that? How you judge that situation? So because you've had people who said, bro, the reason Leon's thing was it was of course it was a good song, but another reason why it took off to such another level is because Overdose is on it. You see what I'm saying? Uh-huh. So how do you how do you feel about people who people who are gonna say he did it because he wanted to get to the next step, which is fine, I guess. Well, they wouldn't be able to say that because, um, let's say on my mind, mm-hmm. it was just TJ Overdose, mm-hmm. Leon, talk right. to him. But on the song with me and him working on, mm-hmm. it's more like I want him to do more. Okay. You know, so it ain't just like right. him putting his name on it. Right. But okay. Like, Let's say tick for the ticket. Mm-hmm. You, you want ticket. him to do something. Put like, like a vibe and like a rhythm, mm-hmm. you know, to like. Like he almost had that verse when he did the Christmas song. With yeah. Uh-huh. Okay. All right. Like yeah. a rhythm, so it wouldn't be. I would understand where people coming from if it's just his tie right, right or his name on it. Uh-huh. Like you just putting his name on this so the song will blow up. Right. But it's more of a feature than just. Right. Okay. So him you putting his name on. Better yourself from a feature from yeah. DJ. Uh-huh. Okay. That's 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 cool. Whatever well, that makes sense. So I see you, you, you dressed to impress, bro. How, how you, how you be f- feeling with the, with the clothes? How you be rocking out? Is uh, what you liking, what you ain't liking? Well, of course I'm, I'll forever rock it all the stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, well, Y and G, you know, I've been now uh, okay. shopping now, start shopping now. They have a lot of good like brands, but what they try to do is stay from the polo or the, stay from the polo or the Tommy or the, like the big like the big name brands, you know, because mm-hmm. like. Let's say I shoot a music video. Mm-hmm. When you shoot a music video, you can't wear like big brands, right. big labels, because mm-hmm. they'd be like, "All right, you gotta find something more right. simple where the brand ain't really showing or something." Yeah. So that's why I shop at Y and G, like just graphic shirts, you know. Mm-hmm. So that's more like what I'm into, like uh, graphical stuff. Okay. Where it's just like a shirt with say vibes, mm-hmm. or a shirt with say yeah, simple fresh. stuff. Simple stuff. Do you have any merch that you you got out? I'm working, working on, on it. Working on some some hoodies. How how quick do you think we, you you could get those out to the people? Probably by March, April. By March, April. Okay, so uh, before we uh, wrap this up or whatever, anything else you wanna? I know you got a meeting in the next couple minutes. Anything else you wanna throw? Out? Anything you working on? Let the people know what's popping with you. Whatever. Um. Well, that's a lot of performances, a lot of surprises we have going on, you know, like, first of all, the album, music videos, there's a lot of things that Dylan's working on for me, shout out Dylan, there's a lot of things, like, the whole team is just working, we going hard, there's a lot of mixes, you know, I gotta show me by Teo and Leaky, there's a lot of mixes they putting out, but yeah, it's just the album, a lot of features, music videos, that's just what's going on right now, a lot of interviews, you're not gonna be seeing this face a lot more. So I'll just get right. Yeah, you know what it is. It's your boy Kanan for you. You're now rocking with Hip Hop Bahamas. Yes, I appreciate it, dog. I saw that's a rap. You're now rocking with Hip Hop Bahamas. I appreciate that.